highways, refineries, severe congestion. These are some of the things that define New Jersey to outsiders. And I mean, they're not wrong. All that stuff exists here, but mainly in the diagonal corridor between New York City and Philadelphia. Venture south and east of the Jersey Turnpike, down there to the fattest part of the Garden State, and you might end up lost in the woods. A good chunk of central and eastern South Jersey is made up of huge undeveloped tracts of scrub pine forest known collectively as the Pine Barrens. These woods are chock full of local history, a bunch of strange kind of weird shit, and one of my favorite fish, the underdog chain pickerel. I'm Joe Cermelli, and this is Fishing on the B-Side. The Pinelands National Reserve, which was actually the first national reserve ever designated in this country, encompasses 1.1 million acres. I've been playing around in those acres since I was 17, back when I thought my 93 GMC Jimmy was the gravedigger. I'd drive way too fast back here and think I look cool while just scratching the f*** out of my truck, but during all that hell raising, I also learned that the eerily dark, tannic rivers, bogs, and ponds spread throughout the barrens were loaded with pickerel. Matter of fact, native chain pickerel are the top predator fish in the pines. They're one of a handful of species that truly thrives here because most other popular game fish have trouble reproducing in this acidic water. Today, I'm driving more respectfully, mostly just to set a good example for my young friend Pete Scharf, who's along for the ride. Pete's a Philly kid I met years ago while exploring the local urban flathead catfishing scene. Turned out that, like me, he had a soft spot for chain pickerel, which don't get nearly as much respect as their pike and musky cousins. See, in, in my opinion, man, like I look at pickerel down here like brook trout. Yeah. They're abundant, they might not all be huge, you come down here to catch pickerel, you know, to experience the pines, to see all the wildlife, and just catch these native fish in, you know, a truly cool habitat. I don't even know why I'm zipping those up all the way. We're not going in chest deep here. We would drown in mud and die. Quicksand, it's more like quicksand. Now, unlike those musky cousins that I'm convinced, at least from my experience with them, eat once every other month, Pickerel typically take a shot at anything that wiggles, darts, and or flashes. Because the water in the pines is pretty shallow and weed choked, we'll be leaning on small floating stick baits today, as well as my personal favorite, the soft plastic zoom fluke. But I've decided to be a hero and start off chucking flies. It's a decision I'll soon regret. broke the ice with the target species in short order. And I, on the other hand, kicked off the day with a little surprise. Um, never caught a large mouth in this spot before. I don't know if that means anything, but first time for everything. Now, on the off chance you're saying, gee, Joe, are there any, like, you know, big fish in the Pine Barrens? Well, first, big is relative. A 20-inch pickerel is cause for chest beating and selfies. And second, yeah, fish of that size do swim here, but you gotta earn them. Pickerel fishing in the pines also rivals native brook trout fishing in that while you know you're gonna pick off a lot of little shakers, the amount of water here tempts you to trudge through the muck to hit one more bend, then another, then another. Go ahead, just keep pushing a little further because the more willing you are to venture away from the easy access points, the more likely you are to find the boar among the little piglets. There's a good one. Oh. Oh. That was a good fish. That was a very good one. We just walked a long way for me to completely f that up. Following that, I got right inside my own head and just fished like hot trash. I was suddenly finding every tree, breaking off leaders, and super pissed that I didn't carry out a spinning rod. 
So while I compose myself and cool down, let's rap a little bit more about those leaders in our handy dandy talking shit segment. The shit that we're gonna talk about today is the perfect pickerel leader, which believe it or not, is something people ask me about all the time. Pickerel have teeth just as nasty as their pike and musky kin, which is why they annoy bass anglers so much. But considering that you use light tackle and small offerings for pickerel, the heavier steel and fluoro leaders used for those pike and muskies don't have a whole lot of value here. After years, and I mean years of trial and error, I discovered the solution lived in the fly section of my local tackle shop in the form of Cortland's SST stainless steel leader material. By the way, 15 pound test is the magic number for chain pickerel. This stuff is nylon coated, it's designed to be knotted, and most importantly, it's not stiff. So here's what I do, and keep in mind, we haven't the time for me to show you the step of every single knot you're about to see, so if you don't know them, you might have to look them shits up on YouTube individually. I start by tying a perfection loop in one end of the wire. Now I can connect that loop to my light main line or the end of a light fly leader with a double Albright knot, which is often referred to as an Alberto knot. Now you can just tie the other end of that leader to any hard stick bait or fly that you choose, but the best part of this material is that it plays so well with soft plastics. I'll attach a finesse hook or a wide gap worm hook with a Rapala knot, and because this material is so malleable, it rigs just as easily and properly as it would if you were using mono or fluorocarbon. And even better, because that wire is so supple, your plastics will move and dart just like they're supposed to. So while the pickerel may end up destroying an entire bag of flukes in one day, at least each destructor should end up in the net, provided you don't set the hook like a complete ass hat the way I just did. Get back up in the stuff, I'm waiting for like a moose to jump up. There's no moose here. Devils, no moose. On our way to the next fishing hole, we take a few detours to soak in some of that Pine Barrens eeriness that gives the place so much more character than the pickerel pond behind the stop and shop closer to my house. There are churches, cemeteries, and abandoned homes here that date well back into the 1800s, long before this was state forest land. Is anybody in there? Hopefully not. <laughs> It'd be like the Blair Witch 3, like three pickerel fishermen get lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, the Barrens are also the birthplace and current residence of the famed Jersey Devil, for which our NHL hockey team was named. He's a mythical beast with cloven hooves and a horse-like head, and people have been reporting sightings of the Devil since he started tormenting them back in the 1730s. I mean, I've never bumped into one, but a distant sighting could be kind of cool. Though really all I'm worried about right now is running out of soft plastics as I wield my trusty spinning rod. Because as the afternoon wore on, our beloved pickerel really started to come around. So pickerel are easy, right? But they haven't been forced today. They've been making this work. We've been hunting, we've been hiking around. But now we're staying put because as the light gets lower, we get the sense that the fish are cruising up skinny for dinner. This is the South Jersey version of Bahamas style flats fishing, which is a total blast even when dealing with peanut pickerel, but it gets extra glorious when some bigger specimens slide into play. Matter one shit. Uh -oh. And through the muck and mire, I awkwardly slog for the first fish we've hooked all day that was actually worthy of the net. Nice fish. <laughs> With their bigger heads, thicker shoulders, and more powerful tails, mature pickerel are just built different than the dinks. And after poking around all day and even missing that one fatty earlier, this 19-incher felt like a thanks directly from the fish gods for the effort. It also gave me an opportunity. Are you good with me making pickled pickerel out of your pickerel? Um. Pete was hesitant until I reminded him that I showed him this spot and I was also driving, therefore I could just leave his ass back here. And then suddenly he was okay with me running that fish back to the cooler so we could rap about apps. Pickerel make fine fish cakes and they're good deep fried, but unless you catch a ton, they don't yield much meat. So try this, simply fillet the fish out. 
don't worry about the Y bones and all that bullshit. Just fillet, then cut the meat and all those bones into bite-sized chunks. Drop those chunks in well-salted water and let them chill in the fridge overnight, okay? Meantime, heat up a cup of cider vinegar, a cup of water, and a half a cup of sugar on the stove. Toss in some peppercorn, allspice, coriander, mustard seed, and my favorite crispy, crunchy, delicious bay leaves. As soon as this comes to a boil, shut her down, let it cool, and then pop that brine in the fridge too. Next day, go ahead and layer pickerel chunks, lemon peel, and red onion in a mason jar, and then top it off with that icy cold brine. After three to six days in the fridge, I was told the bones would essentially dissolve, but full disclosure, I've never made pickled pickerel before right now. But turns out, you put that on a delicious Triscuit cracker, and let me tell you what. No bones, and that is truly out of this world phenomenal. Okay, let's get back to what we were doing because we're losing daylight here. Technically, we achieved all our goals today. We've showed you that there's actually a lot of land in New Jersey that doesn't have an Olive Garden or Pizzeria Uno on it. We've given thanks and praise to a native fish that many people don't care about and even managed to yank a pretty decent one out of those dark piney waters. I was good with that, but just before quitting time, young Pete decided to show me something that shocked me more than if I'd seen the Jersey Devil himself. Oh, oh my God. Somewhere in the giant ball of snot accumulating on Pete's fragile eight pound test mono, we knew there was a big fish. We just didn't know how big. Oh my God! <laughs> Woo! Holy shit! Yes. I think that's the biggest pickerel I've ever caught. Dude, I, that, that's the biggest pickerel I've ever seen in person. Oh, oh my God. Shit. That's like a, oh. Whoa. That's a 25 inch pickerel. Oh, that is a 25 inch pickerel. I'm, I'm floored. I've been fishing down here since I was 17 years old. That's the biggest pickerel I've seen out of this lake. I couldn't have been happier for Pete, really, to see such a Devout pickerel enthusiasts catch his personal best in a spot he'd never been to before today. A, a spot I'd call like a sea spot at best I've been fishing for 20 years. Really, really warmed the heart. It was like a passing of the torch and helped me understand that the next generation will cherish these fish and these woods for years to come. And I'll just be the guy that draws the maps right to all the places they probably wouldn't have found on their own. He does that again. Like f him. F him. I didn't have to bring him. F him. <laughs> He's a dick. <laughs> <laughs>